Hi, we're looking today at the cold steel broken skull folding pocket knife. Alrighty, so this is the cold steel broken skull. It is a fairly new folding knife for 2016 it was by famed knife designer Stone Cold Steve Austin who was actually a wrestler and this is his first knife design for cold steel and can it get any more cold steel than having a knife designed by Stone Cold Steve Austin. Maybe Steven Seagal or Chuck Norris, but at least one of those has been done, I think. <laughs> so there you go. So what you've got here is a pretty simple, but pretty elegantly, elegantly designed, modern, folding lockback knife. The purpose of this one is to be sort of a larger EDC knife. Um, and this is sort of, the hint is there is that it's kind of keeping that really low profile dimensions, that sort of narrowness in the pocket and definitely the lightweight and the thinness. Um, but it's also got enough pep in it to be used a bit more vigorously than your average EDC knife. Let's talk about the basic facts and then I'll go into what I like, which are the wins, what I think are just general good talking points, neither good nor bad, which are the neutrals, and then I'll go into the stuff that I'd probably draw the line and say that's a bit of a fail there. Let's get to it. Okay, so the facts of this knife, you get a four inch blade. It's from there to there. It's a larger blade than you'd usually get. Uh, and it's got a five and a quarter inch long G10 handle. Uh, it's kind of that mid to high roughness. I'd say on a G10 roughness scale of one being glassy smooth and 10 being uh, cold steel recon one, this is about a seven. So it's sort of getting there towards being rougher G10 high traction I guess you'd call it. It's got a 3.5 millimeter flat ground blade made of CTX XHP steel. Bit of a mouthful but it's a newer powder steel made by the Carpenter Steel Company. Similar elements to D2 however it's got powder treatment which makes it finer grained and then it's got a bit of extra uh, chromium I think in it to make it a little bit more stainless as well. Pretty good steel by all accounts used pretty heavily in custom knives at the moment. Uh, it's got a triad lock which is kind of like a lock back on steroids. So you've got a standard lock back here, very, uh, operates very similarly with the extra element being the tri in the elements, triad, um, is this little black pin here. So it sandwiches the blade tang between the back of the lock to make it quite a bit more secure. You can see cold steels testing videos uh, for real evidence on this and you can see my silly testing video for fake evidence on this. Uh, it's got two pocket clips and I mean that in both senses of the word. It comes with two positions and it also comes with a second clip because as you can see they have a shape to them they're not just straight down so this one on this side would bend off that way. There you go. Here's what it is. It's got no liners, which then leads in towards a really cool thing about the knife, which is the weight at just over three ounces, 3.1 ounces, about three ounces, frankly. Very, very light for such a big knife. Let's get into the wins of the knife, the things I like. Well, we'll get back to that weight. Three ounces is super light. Um, it's about as light as I could imagine you getting this type of knife, a knife of this size. Um, and they've done that with the no liners, they've done that with using G10 and they've done that by making it pretty spare in terms of materials. It's, it's thin in every sense, so it's narrow this way and then it's also narrow this way. Yeah, it's a bit longer but it's sort of like a long lanky knife and long lanky knives like long lanky kids don't generally weigh too many kgs. Um, the handle comes in a few really cool color choices. So you get, um, I chose this one because I didn't really have anything this color. Um, and then um, it comes in orange, a really sort of brightish danger orange. It comes in blue, it comes in OD green, uh, it comes in pink, it comes in like a tan color. I think it comes in a black as well. So really, really cool. All they're missing is red and like a nice bright vibrant lime green or yellow. I love yellow. I think yellow would actually look good with the DLC coloring as well. Um, so you've got uh, the, yeah, a bit of variety, so you're doing what Spyderco sort of does with its Endurers, having nice different handle choices. Um, it's got a really good fine tip. Now this knife really does slice for days. I'm really happy with how they've done the blade in terms of usability. It's got a nice fine tip. It's um, also got that really good flat grind and it makes, as you can see in this montage of slicey um, things I'll be showing right now, it slices like crazy. It's really, really good at both really fine cutting where you can get your hand up here on the back of the knife 
or even just hold back and just use really delicate wrist motions, especially when the knife's super sharp, do really, really good precise cutting, picking with this really like fine clip point. But then you can also do some pretty good power cuts. You've got a nice flat length there to get into that cardboard and really rip down and um, spread that sort of cardboard carnage along that nice long edge there. So really, really well designed blade. Really, really cool there. And um, it's ambidextrous, which is always a good point. I'll always give a knife good points for thinking about the lefties as well. As you can see, dual thumb studs. And then it's got that dual clip, which I guess, you know, there are some problems with that dual clip, but I'll get to them later. And it's definitely a strong knife. Look, G10, despite having no liners, it's still a really strong modern polymer, much stronger than any sort of plastic that existed, you know, 50 to 60 years ago. It's it's well done stuff. And you get the FRN liner list knives from Spyderco, which are tough as nails, and this is just going to be tougher. Triad lock's very strong as well, made of good thick steel stock. Not too bad at all. Definitely going to be strong enough for all of your non-abusive heavy tasks. Let's get on to the neutral things, the things that are neither here nor there. So the first thing is the cold steel triad lock itself. Um, it makes the blade a little bit snappy on closing, so it kind of adds this danger zone from about there. So it makes it a little bit snappy on closing, and it also makes it not particularly fast for opening. And you know, I, I'm not the biggest like proponent of every knife needs to be super fast, but um, I've had this for a, oh, for a fair while now, and it's still not loosened up a great deal. So. Uh, just still not ultra, you know, ultra fast, and I guess it's just not as fun as some of the other knives, but I guess it's strong, and strong is what cold steel go for, out of all the attributes first. Um, the G10, it's pretty rough. Um, they haven't made any other aspects of the knife super grippy, so like they haven't added big finger choils here or you know, super aggressive jimping here, so I guess it's all they had to really make it sort of a grippy or really you know, not going anywhere working knife. So I'm not going to dock them points or say that's a fail, but it's just something that you should have should go into being aware of, that's all. Super grippy G10. Um, the clip blade, look clip's functional enough, but I think other styles would probably look a bit better and they might even perform a bit better as well. Um, just a nice drop point without the sort of you know, tip might be the way to go. I don't know though, it's just something I'm a bit neutral on the clip shape. I just don't think it's a particularly good looking blade. Functional as it is. Um, now the dual pocket clip positions, you know, that's good that you can have it left or right. But do you really need a second pocket clip still? They don't, because on the Pro Light they've got a perfectly good you know, two two way pocket clip, which which mean what I mean is you unscrew the pocket clip and just put the pocket clip there. Whereas this one, you have to go to the box, get out your one wrapped in this little plastic sleeve, and put that one on. It's just it's weird to me um, why they wouldn't just make it go straight down here. Just angle these holes a little bit different, and then you won't have the highly losable second clip. Um, so that's just something I'm always wondering about, but I guess it's not really a bad thing, it's just a thing that I've chosen to do. Obviously they're aware that other pocket clips aren't like that, but here we are, still. Uh, the name, Broken Skull, I yeah, know it's a wrestling thing, and Steve Austin's a wrestler. Um, just not my cup of tea. I'm not going to say it's a fail, because it might, might be your cup of tea. And if it's just a personal preference kind of thing, like something like a name that's, you know, this, this knife could say, you know, dick fuck shit butt on it and it would still perform the same it's just you know aesthetics and aesthetics can only really be faulted or praised so much um, really in a knife unless they're particularly astounding or particularly terrible but not my sort of thing um, it makes what's actually what in my opinion it makes kind of what is a really elegant design into a little bit of a shouty kind of um, you know intense statement but you know still just a neutral thing something that I thought I'd bring up but not particularly dock points for and you know, it is the good DLC coating, but I'm not going to really praise the DLC coating in my wins because moving on to the fails, it kind of is one of them too. So the fails. The fails. Why is it DLC coated? So you've got these colourful handles, all different colours of handles, and exactly zero of them look good with the black blade. <laughs> Again, I guess in my opinion, but I'm not just going with opinion on this one. The coating on a CTS XHP blade isn't really necessary at all. Uh, it's a pretty stainless steel, and especially if you just put a bit of a polish on it, it's going to be, you know, more or less maintenance free. It's not like D2 in that it's a little bit corrosion prone. CTS XHP, and you see it on some of Cold Steel's other models, like the Ultimate Hunter, for example, or the Swift, 
not coated. So I know it's probably a design choice uh, from Cold Steel. They they probably love the look of DLC. I just don't, and I would rather it not be on the blade. Um, and yeah, I know I just said aesthetics, uh, you know, you can't really fail, but I think when it's pointless and when it's not particularly, it's just on there because I think they like DLC and blades, it's just something I'm not into. And I think it definitely detracts from the look of the whole series of blades. And the clip itself, it's terrible. It's too flat. It, as well as having the silliness of needing two clips, which, you know, that aside, it's way too flat and it really combines with that rough G10 to make it a bit of a pocket destroyer. So you probably need to, if you're keeping this knife long term, which I probably will because I like it, I do like the knife, probably get a flathead screwdriver and just bend that, at least bend that mouth up there a little bit. Um, and also just, yeah, it might need just a bit of slackening. I'm not sure, it's just too much, too fierce a clip. It really does wreck or shred the pants. Not super fond of the uh, of the um, the clip there. It's actually one of the worst clips I've probably used on a pocket knife. But this would still be a perfectly functional knife without any clip at all. And with a good clip, it'd be you know an even better knife than it already is because I think it's a good knife. Um, and just one other thing, and I'll always call a knife on this. It's got this exposed tang thing here, which on a tip down knife, no sorry, a tip up knife, will reach in, and very often it will grab against the same the wall of your pocket here, your key ring will be around here and it will pull your keys up out of your pants. Um, it's just a basic thing that I think knife companies need to really pay attention to in their designs and just get rid of. I just don't like it. It's functionally something that annoys me and it actually causes me annoyance and it has caused me annoyance on this, on spider code, all sorts of things. Before I get into my final thoughts, I'll just get out a few other knives to show some comparisons too. Let's get into that. I'll zoom out a bit because we're going to do a bit of variation here. So we'll start off with we'll start off with another really great low profile knife. Uh, this is the Benchmade 940, and it's about a you know it's a size below this um, cold steel broken skull, but it's got that really nice. It's it's a shallow knife. It's not tall. You can fit again other stuff in your pocket when you're wearing either of these knives. This is kind of like a a bigger version of this. It carries very similarly in the pocket. So even when you close it. They're not, they don't become these massive discs like you get from like a Spyderco in your pocket. Yeah, it's wider than the 940 a bit, but when you compare it to say like, you know, a Paramilitary 2, um, it's just, you know, I guess you're getting a longer blade in a package that's just as wide. So just a nice slim low profile knife. Speaking of Paramilitary 2, let's crank those out. That's that one there. Again, just sort of a class, a size class down a little bit. Um, getting there though, getting there. Um, let's get some other knives that we all know the size of. We all know the size of a Spyderco Delica. Now this really reminds me of the bigger brother of the Delica, the Endura, um, which kind of has very similar ingredients as in like a plastic handle, big, you know, lock back blade. Pretty cool, so that's that next to an Endura. Uh, we'll just do a Swiss Army knife, of course. Everyone knows how big a Swiss Army knife is, so yeah. And just a couple of fixed blades. We've got a Mora, just a standard companion. So yeah, you see it's about as big as a Mora companion, maybe a little bit bigger even. And then a Falcon even S1 forest knife, which is a little bit bigger than the cold steel. Great, great knife that is. Um, and then just to be silly, we'll just get out, we'll zoom out, <laughs> and then we'll get out the cold steel. XL Voyager, which makes this knife look like the Delica did to this knife. So there you go. Just a few little examples there of how ridiculous knives can get. <laughs> Alrighty. So my final thoughts on the Cold Steel Broken Skull. You know what? I think it's a really interesting and quite surprising direction for Cold Steel of all companies to have gone in. It's um they're kind of going for that very, you know, very trendy thing right now of like a traditional knife pattern using modern materials. And a company like Cold Steel, you wouldn't think they'd be that, you know, switched on. I think they've kind of just done what they do and it's turned out to fit that mold rather than trying to look at the mold and trying to fit it. But yeah, it's just like a really cool way for them to go. They don't have anything else like this and not many other companies have much like this apart from, I guess, the Spydeco Endura, maybe the Almar Eagle, which, you know, the uh, heavy duty one perhaps is a bit of a similar knife. Um, 
what they need to do though is they need to tone down the stuff that they obviously find comforting themselves as a brand. So things like the DLC coding, things like the super rough G10 handles, this weird clip thing, even the triad lock, don't, they're just a bit too hooked on that at the moment. If they made this pattern of knife with like an aluminium handle, like the code 4 handle, with a bit of extra jimping, um, maybe this little bit more of a finger guard just to keep the, the hands in place, but really, if they kept everything else about it, it'd be an amazing knife, especially if they got rid of that DLC coating. It would look like a bit of a stunner, to be honest. Um, but as it stands, it's still a really recommendable knife, especially for the price you pay, which is like 120 bucks in Australia. And that's Endura money, and you're getting a steel that will hold the edge. I haven't done the test yet, but I'm guessing at least twice as long. Um, and you're getting a slightly better handle material. It's definitely a good buy, and it's just got a few little learning curve things to it. Um, so, you know, opening and closing, just try it slowly a few times, don't just go snapping it. Um, and it's got a few things you'll need to perhaps tweak, you might want to fiddle with the clip a bit, but in the end, you've got a great valley knife that's super lightweight, it's the easiest way to carry four inches of blade in your pocket that I've found so far. Thanks for watching this review dudes, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.